Welcome back to the Zen Trap. I'm one of your two hosts, Yogi LG. Zen P. The mission here at the Zen Trap is to inspire and empower the listeners to continuously seek internal peace to maximize your personal potential. We have a special guest today. P, I'm going to let you introduce him. Special guest. So I got a two time alumni, high school and college. Hey, so hey. Five two representative. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Talk about it. Spiritual, holistic health advocate, exercise advocate. I got my boy Charlie Gaines in the building, Gaines Gang, as I'm representing today. Oh, yes, sir. We repping, repping, repping. with it. Yeah. Charlie, welcome to the trap. Welcome to the Zen Trap. Blessed and grateful to have you on. Thank you for sharing your greatest resource with us, which is your time. Yeah. For sure. Here at the Zen Trap, what we like to do to let people kind of get to know you is we let you introduce yourself. So how we do that, our first question is always, we want you to give us your life story, literally from birth until where you are right now. Ooh. <laughs> Try and do it in two minutes, but uh, yeah, yeah. there's no time clock. You're not under pressure to get it done. It's just okay. so that you can, you know, be concise with what you what you're saying. So, right. tell like right. tell the people who you are. Two minutes life yes, story. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm honored to be on the podcast. First and foremost, thank so, you. Thank you so much for having me. Life story from birth. Two minutes. Let's see what we got. All right, so as Barry said, I'm from the 252, North Carolina. It's a small town called Murfreesboro. Population is maybe 2,500, if that. And I'm a country boy, bro. All, all we know is work. So I'm a musician. I'm, I'm a person that I believe you can always learn something and continue to grow. So skate, bowl, work on cars, race cars, motorcycles, whatever it is, you know? There's, being in the essence of a beautiful life. But uh, grew up in North Carolina. I went to school at AT in Greensboro. I got a degree actually in social work. I was in the marching band, I was in the drum line, Cold Steel. All right, Cold Steel. Come on, man. I get pride. Cold Steel. Okay. <laughs> Traveled the world, went to Germany, got to explore what was out there while in college. Uh, I was a wild boy in college. <laughs> we, we could talk about that. Uh, I found love after graduating college and I moved from Greensboro, North Carolina to Atlanta, Georgia. And although the love didn't continue, I stayed in the city and I started going all in on me, figuring out me, what I wanted to do. Uh, how I can offer myself to the world. Uh, made it on a few platforms just from working out in fitness, ESPN, House of Highlights, New York Post, uh, train with Waka Flocka. Killing it, bro. And slight flex, slight flex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're beautiful things. And uh, coming from Murfreesboro to Atlanta to accomplishing those things was a whole, it's just a paradigm shift. It's all mental. So I'm happy to talk about that today. Man, appreciate having you. Uh, our topic, we've been doing topics for the month. I definitely thought of you as a guest when we first said the topic. So our topic for the month is finding peace and meditation. So we're just talking about in general what it takes to even find peace. So just to kind of start us off again, what does finding inner peace kind of look like to you? Like how, 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 does, how does somebody find inner peace? How, does it, how did you find inner peace? And how do you continue to do that? Let's say... Finding inner peace is unlearning everything that you've been taught and also getting yourself to a place where you don't care about caring about what other people think about you. So releasing the care of other people's thoughts and uh, stop reacting to everything and become an observer of everything. Love that. Yeah. Preach it to the choir. Oh, yes. <laughs> Every day, man. Every day. Um, oh, go. No, nah, you're good. Go ahead. If you got more to say, I want to I wanna hear about how you find inner peace for yourself. Uh, as of now, it's, it's movement. Like, I have to move. And I realize that when I don't get movement in, my cognitive, my thinking is it's not there. It's, 
is is skewed. So for me, movement, music as a musician, frequency, we can talk about that today. Uh, waking up with the intention of personally saying, I'm going to have a good day. So setting your mindset. And most recently has been meditation and seeing every person as me, seeing every person as, meaning I see me through both of you. Or I see myself in a homeless person or the person that's acting out or shooting and like you see yourself in everyone so you're able to have grace for people and more love for yourself. Yeah, that's that's dope. And that's a great segue into the probably my next question is do you meditate? How often do you meditate? What what does it do for you? What have you found that meditation helps you with? Yeah. All right. So I want to start by saying when I started meditating, I was like, bro, what is this? What am I doing? <laughs> thoughts going everywhere. Oh, you got to control your thoughts. All right, let me try to slow my thoughts down. And then you just keep thinking. And then you never get to where you want to go. So for me, I call myself having a squirrel brain. I feel like I have a million sec, mil, million thoughts per millisecond. So I started off doing guided meditation. And I was introduced to that because I also do subconscious programming at night. I listen to frequencies and something came up one day, it was like guided meditation. So I was like, all right, let's try it. So guided meditation is when someone is setting the frequency, like they're playing a certain audio tone that relaxes the body. And then they're saying, okay, breathe with me. So they're doing all of the hard things that may come difficult to people and you just follow them. So guided meditation is what really got me into it. And it's more so my preference. I can sit and just be in peace, but I have to have like nature. I have to have be around the ocean or hear the birds or something like that. So I'm still learning to master. I think it's something that you continue to work on as you go. It's definitely a, a work in progress. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Meditation is not something you master very easily. I feel mm -hmm. like there's probably a few in the world, maybe some monks somewhere yeah. in India and that I, are master. I think a lot of people don't see the beauty in that. They're like, you. It's never really a point of trying to master it either. It's yeah, just the it's the of, journey. Yeah, it's the point of doing it, the practice, Ooh. just practicing. For sure, it's the journey. For sure. So, what would you say has been part of your like daily routine that's helped you to get where you are, like with? fitness with the meditation and stuff what what has been a part of something that you do daily that has helped is it like setting intentions is it just meditation is it just the working out in general like what what is it that you do daily to help keep you motivated to keep striving for these different activities and ventures that you're going through yeah so i would say that for me it starts the night before <laughs> going to sleep that's big going to sleep bro yeah for sure uh we run ourselves so much go 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 Got to go do this, got to go have fun, got to go to the club, got to go drink, then wake up at six in the morning and try to go throughout your day and your mind is like, what are we doing? So trying to get adequate rest and like we could talk about the subconscious program a little later, but getting the rest, waking up intentionally, not touching my phone. Like the most I do is turn on some music, put the phone away. Uh, most of us we do hop straight on Instagram and social media and we're already getting, already getting programmed. This morning, my mama woke me up at 6.05 and I heard the news. It's hard to structure your day when you're already being programmed and redirected by something that you, you're not even aware of. So waking up, journaling, three three things of gratitude I do every morning. Sometimes it takes me a while. About two, three minutes to figure out what three things I want to write. But that's just a part of the process. Uh, music is in my everything, in my everyday, is in my everything. And movement. I love that. Love that. So music for sure. Making sure you're not getting programmed by something else. Setting your own direction for the day. Movement. And make sure you get adequate sleep. I love that. That's good. It definitely starts at night. We've seen that in everything that uh, we've read, books we've read about how getting adequate rest and then just waking up and like starting your day in a certain way. So definitely understand that. Um, my next question would probably be like, what do you do to we have this our kind of mantra or slogan as in trap is protect your peace, protect your energy. So what do you do to protect your peace and protect your energy? How do you keep that um kind of locked in so that nobody can disturb that. How do you do that? 
uh, I guess I've had a cheat code growing up. I've always just kind of been a happy-go-lucky person. But I will have to say, you know, whenever you're the happiest, whenever you're in that state or in that frequency, like you remember that, like whatever that may be, if it's, hey, I'm going to the amusement park and I'm excited about that, it's like, how can I make sure that I return to that or I stay at that that level every day? And like I said, frequency music is something that you can use. So 432 hertz is like a lower frequency. It's like a balance. 528 is the same thing, kind of like resonance, feel good. Uh, so whenever I feel like I'm off, I play frequency music. Uh, whenever, let's say something happens unexpectedly or something reacts to me it's like being that observer that i spoke about and doing that positive step talk where you just be like okay charlie okay paris this happened i wasn't expecting it didn't go the way that i was planned but what can we do next or what's the next step versus oh dang 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 yeah because you never really make it out of that right so definitely positive self talk the frequencies again and just trying to keep an overall overall zen. <laughs> so, I, I love that mindset. Too. I got a follow up to yeah, that. Go ahead. Uh, follow do up. you feel like you found that like music helped you discover that the frequencies kind of put you That's in that what space? I was ask too. We can go ahead and get into like yeah. what like what is subconscious programming and how did you learn about how did you even learn about these frequencies and stuff like that? Because I do I've done that before too and do that sometimes like healing frequencies at night like restorative yeah. help your body. I'll play some of those when yeah, I go to sleep same. instead of rain sounds. Same, same, same. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Um, it really started because I wanted to stop like taking medication. For some reason, I kept having headaches. And for frequencies, you can play anything. You can headache relief. I even had like a, I was playing in a staying in a national park area on MLK, and there was some rodents up in the attic. I play a rodent frequency. The next day, they were gone, bro. Uh, you can do it for chakra cleansing grief like I've, I've seen a traumatic accident and i was like i know i need to be crying like, i know i need to release this but i couldn't because that's emotionally not how i've been built and i played that and i was able to cry so just being curious is how i came upon the frequencies then i started studying about like nikola tesla uh you know it's so deep it's hard to know where to start because there's so much yeah. to talk about Definitely big emphasis on the healing when I had my skate accident, road rash, took the old calf muscle up to my hip, skin off, nerve damage, and I yeah. literally could watch it grow back. I could, I do cell regeneration frequencies. Wow. There's a difference when I didn't play the frequencies and when I did, and I feel like I healed much faster than the average person just because of speeding that process of the sales up. So that's really what it is. Your frequencies is playing a tone where your cells is like, Okay, something's wrong. I heard this frequency. Let's go find where it is. Let's let's go uh, mitigate that. Can y'all still hear me? Yep. What when I really realized how powerful frequencies and music was was being a musician playing in church. I could make people cry if I wanted to. I could make them dance. I could make them sing, and it made me realize these notes. Music is really like. Everything around us is sound, from the birds chirping, the water's ocean, everything has its own frequency. And after learning that, you learn that you can manipulate anything that you want to with sound. You can cue things with sound, you can cause natural disasters, you can do anything with sound. And it's actually happening to us every day. You can walk in a restaurant, there's these meters that they will have in the back that plays this frequency. You can't hear it, but this is what keeps people in and want to buy the food or Oh, this is a nice vibe. Or going into these cathedral churches with organs, they play these frequencies on these big horns, and that's what's really healing the people, regenerating the cells. Of course, yeah, they're giving us a good word, but they don't tell us about the frequencies. That's yeah, that's crazy. It's like that's why. Sub- yeah. Uh, do you, what about more on like subconscious programming? Is that the, what you were talking about with subconscious programming? Like what you consume that you're not knowing that you consume. So you're scrolling through Instagram, TikTok, and you're seeing all this 
whatever you choose to watch, you, whether it's violence or whatever, or you watching the news or you are got songs playing and you thinking it don't, it's not affecting you or something. Is that like the subconscious program you're talking about? Like all of that happening yeah. and you're not really understanding what you're intaking every day, how that is affecting your like positive self-talk in your head. You're thinking like, I can That's listen it. to whatever I want, watch whatever I want and still just. Absolutely. That that's it from social media to even us watching our people being killed on national TV, like that causes PTSD and it, it causes a programming. So when you see red and blue lights, you like, oh. So I still it, get a little shook, bro. Be on the highway. Even, what? Your heart beat fast anytime you see the police. Yeah, for and sure. Human beings just like me, me and you, bro. And that's the part. So yeah, we're programmed a lot. For a lot of things that we're not aware of but subconscious programming is playing mantras affirmations over and over or subliminals like there's some frequencies that you can listen to where you don't hear words at all i love listening to the words i love hearing the words like for instance last night i was doing like a quantum jump where you're doing different moving from dimensions so they're playing frequencies that say i am the best that i can be i have confidence i am money comes to me easily frequency frequently like it's playing all of these things so when i wake up in the morning i'm like okay let's go get it so you do this every day bro and your life will change and these are the things they do not want us to know so like nikola tesla has like this 369 method where you write three times in the morning six let's say at noon and then nine times at night let's say for instance my favorite is i heard this somewhere and i i, I did it ever since I am, a, I am the first millionaire in my family, but not the last. And I write that three times in the morning, in the noon time, and before I go to bed. And I read these things. So just imagine saying that before you go to bed. You're believing it, and you're really shaping your reality and the things that you see. And you're just attracting that. I love that. And I love that you didn't keep it just for you either. It's like, I'm not the last either. For sure. Like, I may be the first, but I'm not the last. Like, that's money is just still yeah, coming in. That's where the lessons come. Show. So you've also dove into physical fitness and physical wealth. Um, how is important to you is that? And like, how has it brought you to your, your place, place of consciousness um, to where you are now? Mm. Oh, we go deep on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the body is a big part of what we do, right? It's our vessel. Absolutely. So, So it really started for me. I've always been active. Martial arts as a kid is how I started out. Marching band, as you know, Paris, is harder than football. It's harder than any sport. And I can say two, two, five, two got some of the hands down the best people that can do flips <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. If we had a men's gymnastic team coming out of two five two, we get we we placing in something. <laughs> like these are men's gymnastics not, coming out of two five two. These boys is not trained in nothing. Like not they just outside doing flipping. flipping. I've seen between you and Ivy. I yeah, yeah, could yeah. Do flip from like a full length of the football field, oh, like just keep going, field. and he like six five. Golly. Yeah. And then just chill after that. He ain't tired. Just, <laughs> just, just what he just, just, just did it. And end with a big yeah. flip. <laughs> with a big flip. You uh, you want to know what I think it is, bro? Is growing up in the country, we had to move, we had to work, we had to rake, we had to cut grass. So your body is always used to that, and I really believe down home. We, our athletes could have went anywhere they wanted to if we had the resources and the environment for our people to grow and get out, bro. Uh, but overall with the fitness is, okay, my, my father had a, three heart attacks while I was in college. And from that moment, I started to realize, bro, everyone where we're from are having heart attack strokes high blood pressure, like it's normal. You ain't even be hearing about gout Dialysis. in other places. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you don't hear this in any other places. So I'm like, bro, there's a McDonald's, Subway, Chinese restaurant. That's pretty loud. And That's we got a lot of big trucks. Lucky God. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky God. That's all you really have. And I was like, it has to be food. So I started studying food. I started reading labels and I started realizing, wait, this food and stuff is affecting our bodies in ways that we're not told. But because we, I know I'm going in different places right now. Nah, but because cool. we're so distracted and we have to work 
and we have to work these jobs that we don't necessarily want to, but it's all that's around. And the ways that they're giving us don't allow us to make enough to go out with there. So started realizing what food was doing to our bodies and being conscious of herbs. So studying food, studying herbs, and I started realizing my energy. I started realizing the things that I could do physical that I wasn't able to do when I thought I was in tip top shape, but it's all because I started taking notice of the food and adding minerals and herbs to my diet. And I don't even like the word diet, but whatever. <laughs> um, what is the question? Because I feel like I have no. To you you answered it. <laughs> no, it's cool. Me. We were just talking about physical, your physical wealth, and how that's you know helped I you along the way. That I've experienced that as well when I've changed my diet up for uh, a, a small portion of time when I went, I guess, raw for like two, three weeks with with her. Yeah. I can say during literally probably the second night of just doing it. My quality of sleep and my exercising just shot up. Like I was almost upset that I wasn't sleeping as long as I used to. Just, but I still was like waking up rested, energized. I could sleep probably for four to five hours and just be good, not tired all day long. But not sluggish. I'm upset. Yeah. I'm just upset that I'm in my head because again I've been programmed that I've been eating all this whatever cornstarch, yeah. whatever the ingredient is, sugar, yeah. carbs, whatever. So when I'm not I eating that, I'm coming syrup. off like a fiend. Like man, this stuff is bland. This stuff ain't good. But after that two weeks, when you eat something super sweet, you be like, whoa, this tastes different. Like, this don't even taste like the same no more. Like, this is not even good no more. Like, yeah. this fruit tastes real good now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, bro. What was um, it? What what led you to, like, be on this inward, like, journey? What Do you have a point in your life that you said, this is when I started getting into spiritual awareness type stuff? For me, it was definitely around a pandemic. That was probably my biggest kind of pivot or point where I was like, I got to focus more on my mental health, my overall health, not just mental, mental, physical. I got to do better. Wait, was it a point for you that something happened? I was just sluggish at home and everything seemed consistent and I didn't like it. I needed to do yeah. something different. What was it for you? Same, bro. <laughs> That's Same. why. I'm, yeah. uh, I was in Atlanta. I was in a relationship and I was living with my other at the, at the time and things was getting struggled. I've, I've always been remote. So doing, being remote, remote is my me time. So uh, COVID came and she became remote. So we were always in the house together. <laughs> and it's like, we, we're doing more arguing than we are happy. And I'm already don't want to be doing what I'm doing. And you know, so Waking up every day with someone and I had to force myself to be happy. And that wasn't fun. And that's when I started like, nah, bro, there has to be more to this. This cannot be life. This is not how it's supposed to be. And even thinking about like love and relationships is like, I know people that get married that don't like each other and don't talk to each other. But I was like, no, bro, that ain't for me. That, that ain't it. So when things start affecting my mental health, I'm getting active, I'm sluggish, I don't want to do the things I love to do, and I'm losing my inner child, my little Charlie, that's when things started changing. I was like, nope, we can't do it this way. Facts, childlike, so, not childish. Yeah, ch childlike, for sure. We say that all the time. Um, a another big question I think uh, a lot of people struggle with, and this is, I uh, think you can, I'm sure you're going to have a dynamic answer on this. How do you stay consistent? Like, whether it's with physical, whether it's with your mental health, your frequencies, not touching your phone, those things, like some people can do those things for a week, maybe two weeks, right? But staying consistent, what drives you to do that? Is it the benefit of it? Is it just how you built? What is it? Is that positive self talk that being able to just pat yourself on the back, that me versus me, that saying that I want to do something and you go do it. And also being accountable for yourself to say, you know what, the decisions I made got me to where I am. Or because I didn't do this, this is a derivative of that, that yin yang. Uh, I just forgot that clip. What, what the question was? <laughs> what what what, no, what, like, keeps what keeps you consistent? you consistent in all the different yeah. things you do? Meditation or doing the three six nine, doing the physical working out. Are you just built like that, or is it 
you just knowing that when I do these things, I have this type of benefit, like, because I think a lot of people struggle with, they can start something, but I can't consistently do it. Like you said, not doing a diet, but doing a lifestyle change. Like what yeah. keeps you consistent in those things? I believe is once you set a goal and you actually achieve it, you, it's kind of like a wow factor or just that acknowledgement to say I did it. But for me is, it's the journey. Like I always set goals that are kind of too high. You know how they say set a goal that should scare you. And when I get there, I was like, oh, I actually did it. <laughs> and then I start realizing, bro, it ain't nothing that we can't do, bro. If we, the human body, you can be a contortionist, you can bend, you can twist, you can flip, you can be strong. You can be the best author, gymnast, publicist, business person. Anything that you choose to do is knowing that we're infinitive. And just a part of like the subconscious programming is we have everything within us. We we all know multiple languages. We just haven't tapped into it. We all know how to go surfing or do the things that we're not aware of. We just have to tap into it. And if you want it bad enough, you can get it. So it's Damn. just I gotta tap yeah, into my yeah. swimming because it ain't yeah, it ain't hit swimming? me in my swimming. Yeah, yeah. Same, bro. I just started swimming yesterday. Uh, I just wanted to jump in. I love the content you put out. Love the content you push in. Thank you. Um, how, how did that come about? Like you said, you've been featured in all these different publications and stuff just from doing what you do. How did that come about? And can you tell people about some of your content and stuff? Because, uh, again, like I said, I, I love it. I love how you kind of are pushing the narrative that, like, you don't really need a gym. Use what you got. If you don't have the resources, you can work out wherever, you can meditate, whatever, you can do whatever where you are. So kind of using what you got, can you speak more on like your content and stuff? Yes, sir. Uh, I always love to tell how I got started. I had a roommate in college, called himself John Gaines. And he was he was my motivation, bro. He'll wake up at six, he'll go at noon, he'll end up be right back in there at five. And I'm, I'm in there like, nah, bro, that ain't it. But uh, one day he, he brought to me, he was like, bro, you know you can make a living off of what you're doing or what you can do. You know you can get paid to flip. I'm like, nah, man, it ain't, no, it ain't possible. And uh, I've always could do pretty interesting things because I pushed myself so much. And I posted my first video, saw the response, and I was like, oh, this is normal to me, but I guess it ain't normal. <laughs> everybody else walking on your there is nothing normal about walking on your hands <laughs> nothing. i'm gonna just let you know that nothing. nothing like downstairs like he'll try with five percent of people in the world who could even attempt that uh, so i love you saying that that's that's the part that i want people to get to is life is better upside down it's, it's different it's out of the box is we're taught to be singular such as you want to be an nba player you train basketball high school college you go with but you don't hear about LeBron being on the bobsled team and being able to skier or skateboard or none of that because they want us to be singular. So it's it's about being versatile and just continuing to try things, see where you find passions, see where you can surprise yourself. And that's all I want, bro. My, my platform, my slogan is become better than the you of yesterday. So the platform, I tell people to become better the version of yesterday. So 1% one one forward every day is 365% growth better than you did the last year. Uh, just continuing to strive for the things that you don't even think is possible because they can become possible. So with my movement, I always see, I'm gonna be straight up white people doing the stuff that I do. I'm like, why can they do it and we can't? That's why we do what we do too right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's like, why, why, why can, I'm taking a little deeper, why can they be surfing on noontime on a Tuesday, but we, we work. At the job. And, and shoveling coal. And we at the job looking at them like, they crazy. Them white folks crazy. Them white folks crazy. Them white folks crazy. Them white folks crazy. Yeah. Bro, bro my, uh, my pop said to me one day, I said, I'm about to go kayaking. He said, you own out there with them white people. And I was thinking to myself, like, bro. <laughs> kayaking is so cool. <laughs> bro, it's the most peaceful thing. Yeah, they float in the river and stuff. Going. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, I guess it's been that childlike thing for me, just questioning everything and being like, 
what's what's impossible? Like levitation? Oh well, let's figure out how we can do that too, because I'm pretty sure somewhere it's possible. Uh, so believe in the impossible. It's all good. <laughs> so we've started doing that in our friend group as well. So we have other friends. We started probably like last year telling each other, hey, y'all, do y'all realize that the stuff we tell each other on a consistent basis saying we're going to do, for example, one of my friends got her dream car or something or her dream house. And it's really once she starts saying it a lot and once you start doing it, it ends up just happening, manifesting, like you said, attracting it. So we started saying, like, why don't we say wild stuff? Like, wild say stuff. something wild. We always Set say crazy something dreams. super realistic. Like, That's oh, it. I'm going to get a little, car, just a little humble car or something. Like, yeah. nah, say something like you said. I'm going to be a billionaire or something. Yeah. Watch. I'm going to be a billionaire. Sure. That's it. Yeah. Um, oh. Go ahead. There's a mantra that I love to say with my homies, and it would be like, it, it's simple. It's like, wouldn't it be crazy if? What if it be? Wouldn't it be crazy if this podcast went viral tonight and we became millionaires overnight? Like it, it evokes yeah. a feeling. So that's that's all I felt about it. it. Just then, oh, I felt it. Oh, 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 it's gonna happen, huh? I ain't even gonna say it, it might. You know, <laughs> right, so right. Speaking of those things that you want to happen, even if it don't happen. Love and that. you said something about making something your normal. When you make something your normal, it becomes normal for everybody else. So even if you want to start something and people don't believe in your dream or what you see, you do it for you where it becomes that thing. And they see you and they're like, oh, they actually did it. OK, you actually did it. I lost my, my train of thought. But that, yeah, that was a beautiful point. <laughs> yeah, no, that's you talk. That's that inspire and empower people through the, through you doing your own reflection and your journey. You inspiring and empowering people. Love that for sure, for sure. So we also like to ask this question um, to most of our guests. What is a piece of advice that you would give your eighteen year old self? Like you just fresh fresh out of high school, you getting that. A to go to A and T. Yeah, what you got you, got, you out there on the field. You know what I'm saying? What what's what piece of advice would you give yourself? Mm. The advice I would give myself is those two hundred dollar pair of Jordans and Nikes, all the colorways. One pair of shoes can allow you to travel the world. Two hundred dollars can take you to Mexico, Cancun to have experiences that you will forever remember but when those shoes crease up preach <laughs> preach you i still you, hey you i still got here. i still got mine i'm cool i'm traveling i'm traveling the world in my jordans I'm, that's just how i feel look, look, i'm traveling the world in my jordans just hit them back saying like i'm being versatile over here hey, i'm being hey I, they try you know put me in a box. that one pair of shoe put you in a box you know what i'm saying when you change it up <laughs> i'm gonna take them shoes with me yeah, yeah i'm taking the shoes with me out of the country man i'm i've been fortunate enough to do both so yeah. I, I definitely understand what you're saying. For those of you who ain't fortunate enough to do both, yeah, literally two hundred dollars can take you to see a, a a culture and a group of people that you would have never seen outside your normal day to day. So I, I agree with you hundred percent. I just been yeah. fortunate enough to be able to dabble in both. And we're we're moving into a market now where Jordans can make you profitable. Absolutely. So yeah, okay. you can find your own business. Just like you said, I didn't, I don't, I can't make no money off flipping. Somebody be like, I can't, I can't make no money off shoes or something. Now everybody making money off shoes. I can't make no money off video games. People getting paid professionally to play video yep. games. You How many people paid parents to told them that? What? Like you get can't make no money. Get, get off them game. games. Get out. You outside flipping. Come in here. Nah, you can make money. <laughs> nah, stay out there and flip. <laughs> yeah. Believe it or not, it's hard for like being in a country where. You have to physically work to reap the benefits and see to tell my parents my dream of I'm going to work out and get paid to do it. They're like, what? <laughs> you going to do what? You have to have such a mindset because everybody around there is trying to keep you to whatever their level is. And just like you said earlier in the interview, you have to be so strong in your mindset and beliefs and your uh, meditation and filling your cup that mm -hmm. the energy that people are bringing towards you, you not allowing it to seep into you and pull you down to their level. You, you are self-sustaining your cup. So being mindful of that is just crazy hard to do, especially again. And it, you can't blame the people that's being negative to you around that area because they just yeah. doing what they know, product of your environment, doing yeah. what you know. You can't get upset about it, but 
And it, it's also like their security mechanism. If they love you, it's like they just don't want to see you fail or go through the things that they went through. Right. So it took me a while to figure that out, too. It's like, OK, I hear you. I know why you're saying it. And I got you. And that's perspective. Yeah, that's perspective. <laughs> yeah. I, I also me personally, what helps me is I don't like when people are giving advice about something they truly don't know about. You never tried this and attempted this, but you give me strong advice about telling why me I can't do it. Work, yeah, why it can't happen. You ain't never been outside the country. What you talking, what, what, what you talking yeah. about? Yeah, I think I mean, my people, it's their fear, though. They projecting their fears on you and trying to hold you back based on their own fears. And so just being able to recognize that and matriculate through life, knowing like, hey, I can't your fears ain't my fears and I don't got to adapt to that. Uh, it's really big. And when fear is your comfort level, you just keep doing it because I don't want to go to the unknown of yeah, stuff I don't I've never be experienced. I'm comfortable with fear. Exactly. I know exactly what that is, exactly. so I'm going to keep doing those things. Yeah. Like, I need that. Hey, bro, I just heard two things, but one of them was still going back to the 18-year-old was unlearn everything and question everything. Question. Hit everything yeah. that you hear with a why. You talked about that when you yeah. came into college. BG talked about that too. Yeah. Like just being like, why? Like start asking questions. Yeah. Or just come in from where you're from. You come in, like you said, you used to think stuff had to go a certain way. If yes. it don't go this way, that's not how you can make something. Yep. And then you meet all these other black people like, well, no, you can switch this yeah. out. And still I mean, I remember somebody being like something as simple as like, oh, how you clean your, your chicken? Or how you clean your pork chops? My mama scrape ours. Hey, your mama scrape like, it. Like, what? That is not right. Oh, no. Nah, we we do this. And we, we put our chicken in a bowl. And they do the, wait, y'all do what? You can make chicken that way? Yeah. Like, just learning things that's simple, but taking that to a totally different level. Uh, when you meet people and you're, like, questioning why they do that, you become inquisitive, and that just brings yeah. knowledge, for sure. It brings knowledge and different perspective and gratitude because some people got some stories bro absolutely i love to hear a person's story yeah just love to hear experiences yeah. and stuff like that i'm not big on small talk but i do love to talk about deep things that have happened absolutely. tell yeah. me something important yeah um a question well, we got is our story a question we like to ask to kind of round out uh the interview appreciate it especially again for your time well, um what is the best compliment that you could receive from somebody? What is the compliment you could get from a stranger that just really makes you feel really good on the inside? You look happy. Oh, oh that's a good easy one. Too. You had that that's right. a good one. He had that already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Yeah, bro. And so cause it, it look like you're having a good day. It affirms you, right? It's affirmed that, like, yeah, I probably am. I am. I'm having I'm a great sure day. That feels good. You just I look feel good. Like, I look good. I yeah, thank I am you. Very happy. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely, bro. That is actually mine too. I I like when somebody say mm -hmm. uh, they tell me they feel like I got good energy. That just makes me feel real that's good it. when they somebody say that yeah. to me. And they and they and I know they don't know me. That's when it makes me feel yeah. real good. That's like a little uh, affirming what I'm doing. Like, oh, it's working. It's working. You always been like that too, bro. <laughs> I just been chill. Now, now I can, yeah. I can say it's different though. Back then, okay. which honestly, like you say, sometimes you get you try to get more like your child self as you get older. Really, you try not mm -hmm. to lose that. Back then, I really just didn't care about a lot of stuff, though. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it was from a place of ignorance, and sometimes it was a place from a place of joy, just not getting down to some people's level. But now I can say I'm understanding the ignorance part, and I can be still on both sides of it and, and understand it. Because, again, a lot of times back then, I just was zoned out completely. Like, I just he was I oblivious. Had the energy just because yeah. I don't. I, I'm not even worried about whatever's know, happening around about me. About there, baby. <laughs> it ain't got nothing to do with me. Yeah, that's the do you got any last words or anything in general? I definitely would. Uh, we're gonna have all your lists down here, your websites, mm -hmm. all of those things. You got any plugs you want to do? I've seen you doing the games challenge for the month and things like that. Anything you want to plug right now? Like I said, I'm a supporter, I'm gonna be following. I appreciate you. Like, one, one thing that made me definitely say yes to the podcast is I remember Bear, <laughs> I remember you reaching out with your, your words, bro. Just saying, keep going, man. That that means more than you know, especially when, like I've been doing this for so long. Yes, man. And have haven't even turned revenue with social media at all. Have I achieved things? Yes. So to hear certain times, like keep going, it means more than you know, bro. So thank you. so Yes, much. man. You right there at that door. You right there at that door. Keep going. You are further. Yeah. You further from where you started. Then then. Yes, so ain't no ain't no need to look back. Keep going. Keep yeah, going. for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh. Something that I have going on currently is challenges. So I want to create programs where people can 
just go to their ebook laptop cell phone app and they have workouts where they can do it anywhere calisthenics your body weight yeah. and you learn how to progress from wherever you are but uh you could do challenges right now i have something called a gang gang 30 where you can start at any day there are eight components where you can meditate intentional mindfulness writing down your gratitude getting your water with your lemon cucumber mint uh getting a workout or a hobby or a movement it's just saying you know what today i want to do something for me cold showers love it's love the cold, cold showers. showers that's one of my favorites Ooh, oh my goodness so man that blood, i mean it is like that blood when i tell you like the the how calm i can be coming out of a cold mm -hmm. shower it like my whole day is different i know if i'm gonna have like i'm anxious about something i'm like all right i'm just gonna hop in the shower i'm gonna take a you cold shower on your breath during the cold shower you fine anywhere else in the world you fine you can go out to the world absolutely, absolutely. As, that's another thing too is setting that mental fortitude to say I'm going to put myself in this uncomfortable situation because I know what's going to come out on the other end. Uh, but hopping back into more ventures, my last thing is I'm creating a community called the Gaines Bucket List Community, and I'm really just waiting to move out of North Carolina because I don't got no service here. <laughs> but what this community is is everything that I talked about today. I give the subconscious programming. We wake up six o'clock in the morning we might do yoga i might have somebody come teach we might do breath work setting intentions chopping it up with each other it's just a community where we we do we do the things bro. that's beautiful we we travel i got a retreat coming in november costa rica indonesia in january so i'm just trying to i realize that it's hard to find good genuine high vibrational people and i found this in atlanta as community amazing people so we're all in one platform. We're all helping each other, each other. If you need a chiropractor, if you need a massage therapist, if you need someone to do Reiki healing, like we're all in there to help take care of each other, bro, support each other. So I'm really looking forward to that. And that's how that's, you get there faster, bro. That's how you get there faster, by networking with those people and y'all all, all put, bring yourselves up. It'll yeah. be multiple of y'all uh, doing that millionaire track. So all of y'all can become the first millionaires, but not the last. That's it. For sure. <laughs> hey we really appreciate your time uh you've been great it was super nice meeting you getting to know you on this level um thank you for joining zen trap we obviously want to uh, we're gonna put your socials down there we definitely gonna be we, following the gangs, gangs yes we will be following gangs. what you're doing we're gonna ask our followers to follow what you're doing putting you on uh we want to be a part of that community as well because we're trying to do the same thing right trying to be our best selves every day uh be one percent better and an oh, indonesia retreat don't sound too bad indonesia to sound think. pretty dope i'm just saying I love to pop out january <laughs> sound like a good time too <laughs> right, that sound perfect for me so uh uh we'll there definitely keep in touch with you um P, you got anything else no no we'll, we'll this uh i'm sure in the future we could do this again like i said this ain't got to be your last time on yeah. i i see nothing but success in your future like i said don't don't let it don't, don't let stop. other people's views or, or stuff bring you down keep pushing like you said keep them scary goals ahead of you and keep fighting towards them man fighting towards because then once you get there it's gonna be a new new uh new mountain you could be at the peak of another mountain new mountain yep new mountain that's it all right this has been uh believe two words go ahead please, before I go. please two words for people to do some research on one is aboriginal indigenous and the next I'm is original. I'm have to look that Walter up. Pleckner, 1924, Racial Integrity Act. Okay. Deep that. Go on to deep that. All right. All right. Well, we, we'll, we, hey, follow us. Talk about that on the Zen Trap check because hey, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is either. You'll see us talk about it, I'm sure, coming soon. All right. Well, this has been another Zen Trap interview, perspective, <laughs> whatever you want to call here it. Here we go. Uh oh. Got it. Got it. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, nice, nice backhand tuck. Nice backhand tuck. It wouldn't be Charlie without a backflip. Hey, we here. Hey, if you can't do nothing else, make sure you protect your peace and protect your energy. It's the Zen Trap. We out. <laughs>